Back you one moment here as we just wait for it all to get kicked off here. Nice little Monday night. Let me turn everything down here and let's get ready to rock and roll. Hey guys, how you going? So today on Big Out Sport, we are actually um, not doing obviously a live reaction tonight. Uh, we will be doing a, uh, a live stream uh, chat about how Origin went basically. And we'll be going over and talking about... Uh, Every single individual player here. So I'm just going to quickly switch this one over right now so that you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So obviously, um, as you guys... Uh, ooh, I just realized i got something here in the way that you guys can see there. Uh, let's move that across here. I just want to, so before I get into it, guys, I'm using a different thing tonight. I'm using a different software. So I'm just making sure that everything is working here uh, on the screen and nothing is... Oh, no, that's actually... That should be fine up there. That should be fine up there. Let me just make sure that one over here... And there we go. All right. So yes. So guys, we're going to be doing a uh, ranking today of State of Origin at game number two. Now, obviously, New South Wales did win yesterday, uh, which was obviously a fantastic result for them. They won by about 32 points. Uh, it was, uh, again, a repetitive scoreline for Origin. Origin is usually quite a repetitive scoreline. If you've watched it all your life, usually game one is a low-scoring grind. It's actually usually won by the favorites, though. Uh, but obviously, uh, that wasn't this year, but it was a low-scoring grind, and Queensland did win 16-10. And then in Game 2, last night, we saw New South Wales uh, in a Game 2 outside of Queensland, New South Wales. Usually, New South Wales wins that one, uh, and usually the team who lost Game 1 wins by a big margin in a high-scoring affair. That's exactly how Game 2 went. So, Game 3 is usually up in the air, usually won by the home team, but... Obviously, it's going to be a very, very fun game to watch there in Game 3 in two and a half weeks' time. As you guys can see in the poll, uh, I have given you guys the option of saying whether I should go to a stream here, as we usually do, which you guys love, or go to the game and vlog it, as we usually do as well. So uh, whatever the vo vote is at the end of the poll is what I'll do, uh, because obviously, you know, I'm a, we're a community here, and uh, I love both options. Honestly, it's so hard for me to choose. That's why I've let it you know, go down to you guys. But guys, let's hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe and you're in. And I'll be going back and forth to the chat, but obviously, predominantly, I'm going to be giving you my opinion on these players. Now, you've also got to recognize as well with this list here that I'm giving my perspective. So when I'm streaming, I'm dealing with the chat. I'm obviously giving you my opinion. I'm, a, you know, I'm um, commentating the game. Uh, there's a lot going on. So if I mess up and make a mistake here with a play that you disagree with, let me know in the chat, man. I'm happy to hear it and I'm happy to uh, discuss it with you guys and the reasoning behind why I did select him uh, in that position. So we've got elite, we've got quality, but did the job, we've got not that great, we've got ouchie mama! Oh gee, we've got ouchie mama, which is not good, man. Which is no, not good. Uh, and then not enough game time. So last time we didn't have not enough game time there. And there's a couple of players like obviously Jeremiah Nano and whatnot in the first game who unfortunately didn't get as much game time as they would have wanted. But it's not crazy deal of players who'd be put into that one for game number two there. Uh, but overall, they will still be a couple that we do chuck in. So let's get up, let's get straight into it, guys. So firstly, like I said, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're out here. Much love. I appreciate you guys for getting me to 18,000 subscribers last night. Over the weekend, we had a massive weekend for the International Rep Round and also Origin. Uh, and then this weekend, I'm going to be driving down to Newcastle the Titans game. We've got some streams coming up, so I'm looking forward to it. But here we go, guys. All right. So first up here, we have Angus Crichton. Now, Angus Crichton here obviously came back into the team. We just made sure everything's going over there. Yeah, beautiful. So Angus Crichton here. Look, I'm going to put him into the did the job section. And I think he's going to be relatively high up there or even mid-ranger. I think that he did his job. I don't think there was anything too crazy uh, necessarily about what he did. I don't think he was uh, spectacular. Uh, but there's not going to be many New South Wales players that I necessarily will chuck into not that great this time around. You can't score over 40 points. Uh, 44 points to be exact, and uh, you know, not uh, do that well. Uh, so I really couldn't think of a play that I'll be putting down there. But you never know. Obviously, that's not the first guy there, and I'm going to chuck him in to do the job. I was, I was happy that Angus Crichton did come back into this New South Wales team because obviously the forwards really struggled in game number one, and that was something that Queensland obviously did this time round. The, the Queensland forwards were the strugglers and not New South Wales, but I still don't think the forward pack was realistically the one that won it for New South Wales here. I really don't. I don't think it was... Uh, uh, it was New South Wales uh, forward pack that they got the dub. I think it was obviously the back line, uh, and specifically the halves, and specifically Nathan Cleary. So, you know, I think that uh, the spine was the, the one that got the job done for him. But, yeah, Angus Crichton, I'll track him into did the job. Nothing too wrong with him. I thought he was spectacular, but he got his job done. All right, next up, guys, we're going to go to Apisai Koroisa. Obviously, the Fiji man. Looking forward to seeing him at the Rugby League World Cup at the end of the year. Uh, and Apisai Koroisa, he is a fantastic little player with the Panthers there. I'm going to chuck him. He'll probably end up being, like, 
compared to other players, oh, it's not actually letting me take him in here. Oh, see, gee whiz, it's all over the shop. Um, so no, I'm not putting him there. I'm going to put him into the job. I think he'll go down towards the bottom end. Um, but I still think that obviously he was great. Like, I don't think he did anything crazy. Um, but he did his job alongside Damien Cook. They utilized the Billy Slayer tactic from uh, obviously game one there. And uh, utilized, obviously, the Ben Hunt, Harry Grant effect for Appies. I got a sound with Damien Cook. And yeah, I think he was fine. Um, wasn't bad, and, and I saw him do a nice couple of runs there, but there are other players who obviously shun out a little bit more, in my personal opinion. They, they shun out a little bit more over over the likes of my boy Happy Sake of Sal. But I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for Fiji, uh, and obviously he's going to the Tigers next year, I believe, as well, but um, yeah, it, it definitely worked out with that kind of interchanging of the, the hookers there. Not so much as it did for Queensland in Game 1, but they gave it a good go there, and nothing wrong with Happy Sake. Next up here, we're going to go to Benny Hunt. And look, maybe a bit controversial here, but I'm actually going to take him into quality. There's not going to be many Queenslanders who go in this area. I, don't, I think he might even be... He'll probably be the second highest Queenslander. Um, I, I definitely have one who will be above him. But I thought Ben Hunt was good. I thought that when Ben Hunt was on the field, uh, he definitely did more than his uh, counterpart in Harry Grant down in the hooker role. I thought he was trying hard. I thought he was running hard. I thought he was getting some good movement going. Obviously, something you're going to notice in today's... Shreem is that the first half of that Queensland New South Wales game, we did notice that obviously Queensland were playing very well. But in the second half, they completely fell apart after, well, I'm not going to get into it. But the fact of the matter is, is that the second half, they did fall apart. So it's very hard to read the Queenslanders based on a full game because some guys had really good first halves and then fell apart in the second half alongside the entire team. So... Uh, for me, I thought that if anyone's going to be in quality here for Queensland, it was going to be Benny Hunt. I liked what he was doing there. Uh, still wasn't able to be his absolute utmost best, uh, but I, I really did enjoy what he had to offer. I'm actually going to look at the chat here and see what you guys have to say about this one because uh, I, uh, I believe people probably want to rate him lower, but I'll see what you guys have to say. Uh, Mevin says, Hunt was actually really good in that first half. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Hunt was really good in the first half. And that's specifically what I'm talking about here. You know, it does come down to that first half. Uh, for uh, for Benny Hunt and the second half, it's yeah, like I said, it's so difficult to go through those uh, the Queensland players in the second half because everyone fell apart there. Nate J says Hunt definitely was quality, kept his composure most of the game, had a level head throughout. Uh, John sells me says I think uh, personally putting any Queenslander above to the job is unreasonable. I disagree. I disagree. I think that you're going to see 99 percent of Queenslanders. Probably even in not that great now, Jim Mama. I don't even think you'll see that many and did the job, but I definitely think there is two here. You could argue three. There will be three who don't go into not that great. There'll be one who'll go into do the job, I reckon, and there's two here that I'm going to be putting in quality. So, no, I disagree with you. Uh, but then again, that's what this is all about, man. It's all about perspective, and um, you know, it's all about having the, our own opinions, and that's why it's good to see you guys in the chat getting around it. Uh, Spisa says, Hunt and KP, only Queenslanders that will get above to the job. I agree, but we'll get into that one in a second. So that's where I'll go. I'll go Ben Hunt into the quality section. Next up here, we're going to go Brian to O, and I'm actually going to put him above Benny Hunt. And I think that Brian to O was unreal. Yeah, I thought that Brian to O, uh, he really gave it a good go on that wing. Obviously, he had Selwyn Cobo on his wing, and Selwyn Cobo is a big guy. He's a rookie, uh, and, you know, debut year for him. And he's having a great year for the Broncos, had a... Pretty good game one, uh, but obviously Brian To'o was able to outdo him in game two. He uh, made some really good runbacks. I think he was fine defensively. He stopped Selwyn Cup a couple of times there. And as we know, Selwyn Cup had a horrible game. And Brian To'o was a big part of that. So, yeah, I think that Brian To'o is one of the better players on the field for New South Wales. And I don't think he's going to get the accolades because, one, he's a winger. And wingers are a bonus. And two, because there are more key positions in the halves and whatnot that were in the fullback and who really did shine out for New South Wales. So, yeah, big ups to uh, Brian To'o there. The vibes check is there, plus also the quality was there. Next up here, we're going to go to Cammy Munster, and this is going to be another one here that I'm going to put him to the job. I'm, I'm going to put him above these guys here. I'm going to put him and did the job. He's not going to be at the top end. There'll be guys who will go above him. But I still thought that Munster was pretty good. You know, uh, second half, obviously, they all capitulated. But the first half, Munster was doing his ever-present best, you know. Um, when he went down that left-hand side, passed the ball to Ponga. Ponga broke away. Uh, they got the ball back onto the inside. I can't remember who caught that ball. And then got the ball off to Munster, who scored the try. Uh, most of the first half, Munster was playing really well. I'd say pretty much all of the first half. The second half, he fell apart with Queensland. So I think he definitely did his job. Uh, I think that he was still um, one of the only guys on the Queensland side that was really you know, continuously giving it a, a full-on crack there. And yeah, I, I, I appreciate what Munster had to offer. I'm going to go back to the chat here. I'm going to see what you guys have to say. Um, it says Munster, Ponga, Hunt, and Kafusi were the best that first half. I regret that I said about Kafusi earlier. 
Uh, we'll get to Kafusi. We'll get to Kafusi. Uh, but I definitely agree in regards to Munster there. Uh, Connor Lambert says, I cannot believe KP plays as well for Queensland, but not the Knights. Uh, there's some context for that, and we'll speak about that when we get to KP. And uh, Oslo says, Ben Hunt did the job. No, I disagree. I think he was above that. Uh, Fesh says, Munster also tried his best to milk penalties. Yeah, but like, look, that's what you're going to see, you know. And we also saw that with the um, it was a blue in game one that was really uh, trying desperately with his kicking. I can't remember who it was. It wasn't Cleary. Well, it was Cleary. Cleary, every time he kicked the ball, it would go down. Um, so you've got to remember, man, Cameron Smith is one of the greatest of all time. And he was infamous for deliberately trying to get penalties. It's part of the game. If you're the best at the game, you're very quality in regards to position. Plus, also, you know how to get a penalty. It's all part of it. If you're a Queenslander, you'd be like, oh, yeah, awesome. That's the part of the game, man. So uh, I believe that Munster was was pretty good. I don't think he was at his best, um, but in the same sense, I still think he was he was fine um, and did the job there. All right, let's move on to the next one here, guys, which is going to be Cameron Murray. And Cameron Murray, for me, it's a hard one. I actually personally liked him. Uh, the stats don't necessarily show it, but I'm actually going to put Cameron Murray there. Now, another reason for this with Cameron Murray is that, look, obviously, he made a few tackles, made some good meters. He also went off with a big HIA, right? So he, I'm surprised he even came back onto the field, uh, Cameron Murray. I thought that um, Cameron Murray uh, was you know, gone as soon as we saw that at first. But he does come back there and he, he gives it his best. You know, He's not going to be the best in the field, but I still think he was way better than what he was in game one. Way better. Uh, game one, he was dreadful, let's be honest. Uh, the forwards were all dreadful. And Murray was one of their worst. I think I had him in Ouchie Mama in that first one, but... Uh, yeah, game two, I liked him a lot. And uh, actually, I'm going to see what you guys have to say about this one as well, to be honest with you. I want to see if you guys have anything to say about Cameron Murray. Uh, uh, no one really saying anything about Murray. But <laughs> guys, let's try and keep it as much as possible about the people that we're talking about because we've got uh, 34 people to go through here. 34 players. So uh, we will get to the players that you're mentioning. We will get to the players that you're mentioning. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it just let's try our best to keep it to the players that we're currently talking about. Uh, Fresh uh, Boy says Cam Murray was very good I agree Yeah uh, Look I, I don't think he was I, d I don't know if I have enough To put him into quality And if I do put him into quality It would be at the bottom end uh, But I do think that Yeah He was one of my More favourable players In the field Especially considering That he was coming back From a very big uh, Head knock Twiggin, Twiggin says Murray was okay Yeah Exactly right uh, Played well also Kind of Lambert says uh, Yeah There we go So let's put Murray At the top end And do the job Next up here We've got Daily Cock Eater and Daily Cherry Evans. Now, we're out of origin, so uh, we're now out, out of that origin mindset. So my Queenslander goes back to being a Titan, and now I hate Cherry Evans again. Um, but I did put Cherry Evans pretty good in that game one. But today, unfortunately, oh, Chimama! Chimama! Oh, no. Oh, no. So there's a couple of reasons for this. There's a big couple of reasons for this. Uh, Daily Cherry Evans goes into Algie Mama because, one, uh, he's the captain. So for me, that second half is mainly on him. I will say this. That second half, that capitulation, is mainly on the captain. Because as a captain, your role is to talk to those boys and say, shit boys, I know we're going to lose this game, but at least put an effort in. You know, at least not just completely throw this game away. Don't let them get a massive, massive scoreline blowout. Like it got silly in the end. It got silly. It got silly. And Cherry Evans is a big part of that. I don't think Cherry Evans really did too much of the kicking game. I thought he was quite bland for most of the game. I don't think he did really anything. So uh, he is going to be very, very low here. Uh, I don't know if he's last, but he's going to be very, very low. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put him in Alchi Mama, and I don't think there's really any disagreements there, to be completely honest with you. I really, uh, I, <laughs> I really don't think... I really don't think anyone's going to disagree with me. Honestly, I didn't see DC at all speeds, it says. Yeah. Uh, Dazmay says, DCE couldn't kick a cow in the guts. Wow, Dazmay. Yep, that's Dazmay for you. He's here. He's ready to go. He's ready for those bulldogs this week. He's a muppet too. He's, he's a muppet. Uh, we'll put Chuck in, Sherry Evans into Algie Mama. Uh, and hopefully for game three, he can... He, especially with Munster potentially being injured for game three. I think he'll be right. Uh, but uh, apparently, he's out for this week, definitely. But yeah, with Munster potentially being out for game three, Sherry Evans is going to have to even step up even more because you'd assume... And maybe Tommy Dearden would go into that sixth role and you'd need, in a game three, at Suncorp, Cauldron, 50,000 people there. Sold out already, sold out weeks ago. Yeah, New South Wales tried to do that uh, without giving away tickets. But, uh, you know, I, he's going to really step up in game three and he did not step up in game two at all, Cherry Evans. So, yeah, he goes into Alchi Mama. Next up here, Damien Cook. <laughs> I think he's going to go in to do the job. I, I really don't think the hookers were the ones that really kind of 
did much uh, for uh, New South Wales as a whole. I think maybe I'd put him above Crichton there. Uh, but, like, I, I really don't think it was the hookers. I think that Damien Cook did his best, and they, they were okay. Uh, but it, it wasn't really down to those two guys uh, for me. I don't think they made too many tackles in general. Uh, and the meters uh, really weren't anything crazy. So uh, I'm a big fan of Damien Cookie, the Cookie Meister, the Cook Man. But it wasn't one of his best games. But they won 44 12. Who gives a shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> who gives a shit? But did you know that he is a beach sprinter? Hmm? Queensland don't have any beach sprinters. That's why they lost. That's why they lost. That's why they lost. Alrighty, let's move on to the next one here. Unless anyone has anything to say about that one. So I've got you guys on my phone here. Uh, for the comment section, uh, because like I said, I'm on a different thing overnight, so I'm having to utilize it differently. <laughs> it differently. Tepper says his monster out. I don't believe so. I think he's just uh, he's injured now uh, for this week, definitely, but I think he'll be back for game three. Uh, Cook was on the bench for the first 20 minutes of the match, which I found a little strange. So, no, Mabadev. So, why I say this about Cook is that Cook was on the bench for the first 20, like Harry Grant was for the first 20 of the first game and second game here. So, uh, Freddie Fittler literally copied the tactics of Billy Slater in the sense that Ben Hunt started, Harry Grant came on, right? Apisak got south, started here, and then Damian Cook came on. So that's the, that's the process that they utilized there. So, yeah, I think Cook did his job. Uh, nothing wrong with him at all. Nothing spectacular. But you get him going there, baby. And you get him going. All right, next up here, we've got Dane Gagai. I don't think I'm going to put him in Ouchie Mama, but it just wasn't that great. You know, it just wasn't. I've been saying for a few years now, if you guys are regulars of this channel on streams or videos... I love Dane Gagai. I think he's, had, he's got a lot of experience. You've got to keep him in for game three. You've got to. You can't take out and put in an inexperienced guy like Hamisa Tabawai Fado into that center role there uh, for game three. You have to stick with the majority of this team. Uh, it's just too much to, to be changing right now, uh, and especially going into that home game. I think Gagai has been done for a couple of years now in regards to the utmost quality that he obviously can possess. I think it is time after this series to move on, but I think for now you do still have to keep him in there. Defensively, they kept going down his side last night, and defensively, he wasn't really up to the task. They kept absolutely slaughtering that side, making breakthroughs. I think he was on the same side as Selwyn Cubbo, and yeah, they just didn't do well. So I'm going to put him in not that great. I'm not going to put him in Ashley Mama because I don't think he was that bad, but he was not great, let's be honest. It's just simply he was not great. Uh, next up here, let's move to Daniel Tupo. And this might be a bit of a surprise to you, but I'm actually still going to put him in quality. I'm still going to put him in quality there. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think he was pretty good again. Game one, obviously, he was very good. Uh, I will still tell you, and people, people out of car haters or people who believe Tupo was 100% should be here are going to hate what I say here. Um, but I still believe that I would personally go with that car personally. And the reason being is that Daniel Tupo is an incredible winger, but he's more of a safe, incredible winger. And then Addo Carr is an incredible winger, but he's an explosive, incredible winger. So for me, I personally would go with the explosive, incredible winger over the safe, incredible winger. But Daniel Tupo can't be dropped right now. Daniel Tupo will play game three, regardless. And I think that he's had a good series so far, a very good series so far. He was one of their best in game one when they lost. And he was very good in game two. So, yeah, i got Daniel Tupo up there at, uh, in quality. I, uh, I personally think that Benny Hunt probably just gets a little bit over there because he was one of the better guys there for Queensland. But, yeah, I'll, I'll put Daniel Tupo in quality. And uh, if people don't like that, I, I really do feel like you're just kind of hating on it because of the Josh Over Car effect. Um, Josh Over Car's great, but... Daniel Tupo's not getting dropped. He's not going to get dropped, baby. It's not going to happen. No, sir. Alrighty, next up here, let's move to Felice Kafusi, and I am throwing him here. I'm throwing him in Ouchie Mama. And uh, I believe that... Uh, I, I Look, I very much disagree with the sim bin. Very, very much. Uh, you guys know my thoughts. I lost it last night on stream. I was very angry uh, with the refereeing in regards to the sim bin there. I think that there was non-calls for this team and then very much a lot of uh, calls against this team. And it is what it is, man. But Kafusi, he, he wasn't great. He was ill-disciplined. Um, and it just he wasn't my kind of guy. And that's why when Medvedev before said, oh, I regret saying about Kafusi, I'm like, well, you really shouldn't because it, it's not like he did anything spectacular in the second half. He, he did his... He did a few things in the first half, but I still think he was very bad. Um, and obviously, he gave us a, gave him a couple of six against that whether I agree or disagree, that's fine. And I don't even necessarily disagree with the, the call of the six against, but it's about the fact that there was a lot of six against in a row here, but yet we could obviously clearly see that New South Wales were holding down the tackle for a very long time, and the referees were not calling it. Uh, they, were very, they were very clearly not calling it. 
So that is the frustration with that call in the sin bin. It's not necessarily that it wouldn't have been a sin bin or I don't agree with the call. It's just that the calls are getting made there. And the calls aren't being made there. But I've got Felice Kafusi there at the bottom, or one of the bottom two, bottom three of LG Mama, and need to be seeing a lot more from him in that, uh, that next game. But I will say this about the back row situation. David Fafita comes back for the Gold Coast Titans this week against Newcastle. If he has a good game this week, I'm telling you right now, they could rush him back in. If Latrell potentially could get rushed in for uh, New South Wales uh, after a long-term injury, so could Dave. Now, Dave has had an injury with the season, but I'm telling you right now, uh, Dave would be a huge addition to this Queensland side uh, in a much desperate time, especially with Jeremiah Nanai, who probably won't be in a good position here either. Uh, but again, he might be not get enough game time. Uh, but yeah, Dave Fafida is going to be eligible for Game 3, uh, which will potentially really help this Queensland stock. Uh, let, get my wife's name out your mouth says do you think Queensland was robbed and Blues fan no I don't think Queensland was robbed I wouldn't go as far no way I think that the game was adjusted dramatically based on uh, the first half of a very lopsided six again count uh, or just the, the lack of six against for one team but no I don't think it was robbed you can't concede 42 points or 44 points and think you were robbed but the game was dramatically adjusted is what I will say there in a negative light for Queensland um, but no I wouldn't, I wouldn't say robbed Next up here, guys, let's move to Harry Grant, and I'm going to put him in not that great. I'm going to put him here. I think he's better than Dan Gagai, but yeah, I think that he was, for his standards, dreadful. For his standards, he was very poor. I think that there was much better players on the field here for Queensland, and uh, it's unfortunate that obviously one of the, the players of um, the, the first game that I thought did really well is now down here and not that great, and in such a key position in that hooker role. So no, I, I think it's, it's super disappointing to see Harry Grant uh, not get what he normally could do going last night. Uh, but it's all part of the game, baby. And sometimes players just don't uh, live up to their expectations in individual games. But look for him to, to kill this week for the Storm against Manly on Thursday. Jeez, that's going to be an interesting game. All right. We've got Isaiah Yo here for the Blues. Now, this is a play here who, for me, is the best lock in the game. Uh, Cameron Murray would be clear second. Uh, very close, but I'd still have Isaiah Yo as the best. He's incredible for the Panthers. He's a guy that you can sometimes not notice how good he's playing, and yet he's playing very well. But because uh, he's not really... Sometimes he does a lot of things off the ball, and sometimes he's not exactly the biggest stats man. I think that he was okay. I think that he did his job. I'm going to put him in and do the job. I don't know why it's not letting me move it up there. Um, hopefully it moves up. It'll move up at some point there. Um... I've got him in do the job there. Maybe not there. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, look, I think I'm pretty... I'm probably going to put him to the top end, uh, maybe here, top or there. I, I, I think that he had a very good second half. I didn't see much in the, in the first half, though. But this is a hard one for me because, like I said, I believe this guy is incredible and I might not have seen it. I might not have seen it and everyone else might have seen it. Just like the... Who was the guy in the first game? Who was the guy in the first game? Um... There was one that I had a big miss on because I'm so busy doing so many things in the, in the game that I miss out on a couple of these players having games. Uh, Ring Cam Gillard was kind of like that. Uh, do I put him... I'm going to... Uh, for me, I've got him here. I'm going to see what you guys are saying. I'm going to say... No, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to put him above Munster, below Murray. I don't, I don't think it was okay. I don't think he did anything wrong. I didn't see him a great deal. He got a few metres going. Um... Second half, he was probably all right, but I don't know. I'm going to look at the chat here and see what you guys are saying. Uh, elite. <laughs> you wish he's elite. You wish he gets put into elite. You're dreaming, sir. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Uh, Fesh Boy says, you should be elite. You wish, her, mate. Nevada says, do you think the Smurfs will bring Ado Car back into the team? I've already spoken about that. Uh, quality at best, as mate says. Uh, Nate J says, yo, will play Origin for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Will Edwards says, wasn't the best in the middle for New South Wales. Gerbo and Paulo were better. Yeah, we'll get into them soon. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm pretty happy we did the job there. Anyone saying elite is wild. Uh, <laughs> is wild. Uh, but I'm happy there we did the job. And uh, and the upper end of do the job at that. All right, next up here, we're going to go to Jai Arrow. And Jai Arrow goes in between Cherry Evans and Felice Calfusi. He was not good, unfortunately. He was not good. Good. I would honestly give him nearly a three and a half, four star in that game. Uh, I think that he's a much better player than what he provided last night. And I think that Jai Arrow was, yeah, relatively, relatively really bad. <laughs> honestly, I don't have anything else really to say there. He was very poor. 
uh, and didn't give us anything. Defensively, didn't give us really anything and was a bit of a waste, really. Um, it's sad. I like Jai, but it wasn't his game, man. It just uh, was not his game there. Next up here, we're going to go to Jake Trebojevic, and I'm going to chuck him right here. I'm going to chuck him in quality. You know what? I'm actually going to chuck him above Benny Hunt. I'm going to put him into the top area of quality. I thought Trebojevic was great. I don't know if the stats say it, but I thought that he was running the ball hard, especially in the first half. It was a grind. That first half was a grind. Second half was a blowout. The first half was a grind. And Trebojevic was one of the better New South Wales players in that first half. I really uh, enjoyed watching him play. I thought he was a much-needed uh, player here for the Blues in game number two. And, yeah, he, he played an enjoyable game. We all know that's what Jake Trebojevic brings to the game. That's why a lot of people complained he wasn't there in game one. Uh, and, yeah, I'm pretty happy to say he was one of the better on the field there for the Blues, in my personal opinion. Uh, Twicken says, hi, to the job, and I love you. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Ken says, uh, not that great in my opinion. I think he's talking about Joe Arrow there. Uh, Jimmy Bills, his defense was top shelf. Yeah, yeah, look, obviously, Jake Trebojevic is, is a great defender, man. Obviously, for Manly, he uh, really knuckles down. And Manly, <laughs> this week, you're going to need that. But Manly, they... Uh, they're a tough team in regards to a, a few, uh, in regards to their defense normally, and he's the big part of that. Now, recent years, in the last couple of years, it's been a bit of a worry, but yet Jake Trebojevic is still always putting in that top shelf performance, and it always deserves that New South Wales spot, and, and always puts his name up for that Australian spot too. So, now great to see that Jake Trebojevic gets back into the team there, and um, no, I thought he was one of my favorites to watch in, in last night's game. Next up here, James Tedesco. If you don't think that he goes here, you're an idiot. James Tedesco was absolutely superb. James Tedesco was absolutely unreal. I'm a Queenslander, and I love watching this guy play. I've been saying to you guys for years, I had copped a lot of shit last year from you guys. Yes, I'm saying you guys in the chat for saying that Tedesco was the best fullback in the game. I have him better than Trebojevic. Trebojevic is too injury-ridden, and also, I still think Tedesco consistently has been just simply better for a longer period. I think he's got more accolades, and I think he, he's, he's been just simply way more consistent. He's the captain of New South Wales. He is uh, the Australian fullback. And he's just simply ridiculous. He ran for like 250 metres. When does he not run for like 250 metres? In game one, he was the second best player on the field for me, if not the first. I think I had him as the first, for New South Wales, that is. I think I had him as the best New South Wales player on the field in that game one. So, yeah, crazy to think there's still hate around for Tedesco. Uh, but, yeah, for me, I'll, I'll chuck him there into elite. And uh, I, I absolutely love what Tedesco does bring to the game. Uh, TikTok, I agree that Teddy compared to Turbo. Yeah, well, last year, a lot of you guys didn't. Last year, a lot of you guys did not. Uh, Dazmay said, oh, this is a problem. We should actually put him down here. Hey, hey, we should actually put the desk down there because there was no bunda. We didn't get no bum action last night. That's a problem. You're lucky I'm going to still put you in elite. Dear me, we usually get some bum action from the old Teddy Bunda. But no Teddy Bunda last night, which was very disappointing there, unfortunately. Uh, but let's move on to Jerome Luai here. And out of the halves, I really... Didn't think he did much. I thought he uh, obviously didn't need to do much. It was like game one. I thought he was the better. I thought he was the better. Uh, you probably have to put him above. <laughs> but like, did he really do anything here? Where would you guys... I actually want to see what you guys... I'd put him around this area here and did the job. I think that obviously Cleary took it control of those halves last night. And I don't think Lua had to do much. I know he scored a try. Uh, so did Munster, to be fair. Uh, I think they were very similar. I, it really... It kept, do we put him above Munster just because they won? Like, real, realistically, people are saying quality. I guess it's quality. My wife's saying it's quality. Speaks it's quality. Okay, we'll put him in quality. I'm going to put him down there, though. I'll put him down there, though. Uh, and the reason being is because, yeah, I think the Cleary took control of the halves, and uh, that's about it, really. Did the job, made bottom of the quality. We'll chuck him at the bottom, bottom of quality there. I think that did the job is probably more likely. You know what? No, I'm going to disagree with you guys. I am going to put him here. Just simply because Cleary took more control of it, and uh, he was still fine, uh, but it didn't really get that explosive game plan uh, that normally he utilizes with his pace and, and energy compared because of the fact that the halfback was taking the lead in the game compared to game one, where he needed to take the lead in that game, Jerome Luai. So, yeah, I'll disagree with you slightly. I've got him at the top end to do the job there, but uh, yeah, I think that there's, there's much better to come from him, but it's not because of his fault. It wasn't because he was bad, it's just that the guy next to him was better, <laughs> personally. That's that's why I've got him there. By the way, guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe and you're out here. We're about halfway through, so we've still got heaps of plays to get through. Uh, so we'll probably be another half an hour or so. Uh, so kick back, put your feet up, and uh, have a drink, baby. Have a nice little drink. As we chill out, and let's get on to the next guy, which is uh, Jeremiah Nanai here. I don't believe he had many minutes. I'm going to put him in not enough game time. 
I don't think he had many minutes at all. Can you guys tell me in the chat how many minutes he had? Or can you tell me in the chat? He made a few mistakes, to be honest. Jimmy Bill says, uh, it's about Luai. I'll read what she's reading. says he didn't have to kick much because of Burton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chicken Box, I reckon he stood up and did the job. Uh, fair enough. But all right. So, yeah. Anyway, back to Jeremiah Nanai here. How many minutes did it... Because oh, I don't remember seeing him much at all. So it's either that he just didn't have many minutes or he goes into not that great slash ouchy mama. Came on late in the second half. Yeah, I remember that. I think it was like maybe... 70, 66 minutes or something like that. I'm going to put a non-enough game time. I think I think it's fair enough to say. I'm going to put Jeremiah Nanai non-enough game time. I always have been saying to you guys this year as well, I don't think Nanai is a, is a bench option. I don't think he is. I think you either start him or you don't play him at all. I, I really don't think he should be in the team unless he's starting. I don't think Jeremiah Nanai brings that explosive power off the bench that you need. He's not one of those damaging ball runners uh, comparatively to, say, for example, David Fevita, who's coming back. I think Nanai has to either start or not be in the team. I just don't think... I think it's a wasted spot on the bench. I really do. I think it's a wasted spot on the bench. That's why it took so long to bring him on. You know, that's why it took so long to bring him on. It's a wasted spot on the bench for me. So, yeah. I've got Nanai not enough game time. Let's see if he makes it for game three. It'll be interesting. Next up here, we've got uh, Josh Papali'i. And uh, I'm going to put him in not that great. I, I didn't see him much. I think that for... The Queensland forwards, they obviously uh, put themselves in the position that the New South Wales forwards did in game one. They just didn't get their job done. They didn't do it. Uh, and you can't argue the job for Josh Papali'i because the forwards did not lead from the front. They did not get the metres needed for Queensland. So, majority, if not all, I think there's one forward here that I'm going to put at the very bottom of did the job. But for Josh Papali'i, I'm going to have to put him in not that great. Yeah, I just didn't see him do anything spectacular. And uh, there were a lot better players on the field. Uh, barely had any game time, to be fair. Isaac says, yeah, but it is what it is, man. You know, with the game time that he did get, uh, I'm going to have to throw him into uh, into not that great there because obviously he's a very experienced uh, play uh, player there and uh, you'd expect a little bit better from the more experienced game time uh, of, of a Josh Papali'i. Next up, here we've got Junior Paulo. I'm going to make a big call here. I'm going to make a very big call. I'm going to put him in elite. I'm putting him in elite. Crazy call, cool, baby. Crazy call. Cool. Putting him in the lead. I thought Junior Paulo was spectacular. I thought he was. And I know a lot of people are going to say quality, but I thought Junior Paulo was the best forward on the field, for one. And I thought that uh, way better, 100 times better than game one. You just saw the mongrel in him. You saw what we all knew he could bring. Uh, I thought his defense was fine. I thought his uh, attack was just brilliant. He was making meters left, right, center. Uh, it was... Jeez, it was just a really good game by Junior Paula. So, no, I, I've got him in elite there. I want to see how many of you guys are going to put him in quality. But, yeah, I've got Junior Paula really high up there. Uh, I thought that he was just simply ridiculous to watch. Uh, and he was a monster. And that's what we wanted to see from game one. We didn't get it. We got it in game two for me. So, yeah, no, most people are, uh, are agreeing there. Uh, that's what it says. Junior Paula and Ouchie Mama. No field goal from him. <laughs> You're a muppet. Uh, Feshboy says, elite for Paulo, he was the best forward. Yeah, he definitely was the best forward for me. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think he's going to... It'll be top three. It'll be top three here. Oh, top four. It'll be top four. Uh, I think we all know who we are the two that goes into elite here. Uh, but let's move on now to Caleb Ponga. And I thought he was the best Queensland player in the field. And he also came out at one stage here. I'm going to put Caleb Ponga above Benny Hunt there. I thought they're the only two guys that I've got in quality for Queensland. I thought that Caelan Ponga uh, was clearly the best player in the field for Queensland by a, a, a decent margin. Uh, I thought that uh, it's, it's crazy that Caelan Ponga cops the hate that he does just because of the wage that he gets. It's not his choice. That's the club's choice uh, for giving him that wage. Uh, that doesn't make him overrated because he's not overrated. You know, people. someone asked me before, why does Caelan Ponga play this way for Queensland not this way for Newcastle? Why? Because Queensland have a lot better players than Newcastle. He's able to run a little bit better. He's safe there. He doesn't have to be the star in Queensland. He's got Karen Munster to do that. Harry Grant to do that. Uh, you've got Cherry Evans to do that. You've got a lot more players to be the stars in this team. Ponga is the only star in that Newcastle team, realistically. So there's a lot more pressure on him. He had no pressure last night. He was very safe. Scored a try. Uh, had, sorry, didn't score a try, but he had two assists, effectively. Uh, one of them was when he ran down that left-hand side, passed the ball on the inside, and they got the pass away to, uh, to Munster. Also had the assist for the first try. So I thought Kevin Pong was absolutely superb. So I'm going to put him in quality, and I, I really don't believe he should go anywhere else, to be fair. Uh, Blitzy says, if Cleary doesn't get a lead after this, that's the biggest robbery of all time. I'm going to put him in action moment just because he told me to do that. Uh, Scotty Minto, getting Shirley Paulo's pushing for his selection. I would not necessarily disagree. Scotty Minto next to Mortal, by the way. <laughs> Scotty Minto, what a man. Him and buddy Will Zillman. Uh, Will Zillman, vice president. 
Uh, surely Paul Lowe's pushing for an odd selection. You wouldn't necessarily disagree with it, but in the same sense, man, you've got to remember, like, game one, people hated Junior Paul Lowe for what he did in that game. And then game two, everyone's now, you know, circle jerking him. And it's like, I get the circle jerk, and I don't disagree with the circle jerk, but, you know, a lot of people are forgetting that they despise him, and same with Cleary, mind you, uh, that we'll get to in a bit. But, yeah, Junior Paulo had a pretty poor game one and had a very good game two. Uh, so let's see game three. And then, you know, Australia's selection at the end of this year is going to be absolutely um, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal, man. So I'm looking forward to what uh, Australia does produce there. And it will have a mix of, uh, of New South Wales and Queensland. It's not just going to be all one team this year, in my opinion. I think there'll be a, a really large mix of both uh, both teams. Like, obviously, you'll see uh, Harry Grant and Ben Hunt both put their names up there. Damien Cook putting his name out there. Uh, you've got uh, Cameron Munster chucking his name there. Uh, well, Cameron Munster will be there, sorry. You got you know Nathan Cleary will be there. Uh, you've got the forwards of, uh, of Australia where you'll have Tino Faso Malawi putting his name up. You have Paulo putting his name up. Uh, fullback spot, obviously Ponga would want to, but he's not going to because Tedesco will get it. There's too many fullbacks right now. Too many really, really good fullbacks that will be ahead of him as well. Uh, it's a really good time to be alive for Australia. It always is, man. Uh, but yeah, no, Junior Paula definitely will have his name uh, around that point. Okay, next up here, Kurt Catewell. Yeah, look, I didn't see anything from him at all. I'm actually... Uh, yeah, look, I just don't think he did anything. I don't think it was great. I don't think it was great. Uh, I think I could put it below Dan Gagai there. I think that Kurt Catewell was unimpressive. And... I guess that's kind of what I've always thought of Kirk Hatt. Well, like, I'm not mean to be rude to him at all because he's really helped the Broncos really uh, return to being a lot better of a team in this year. Uh, he's helped it. He's not been the only reason for it. He's not been the main part of it, but he's definitely assisted in the growth of it with the experience factor. But yeah, I didn't think it was great. I didn't see him do anything. And uh, I, 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 yeah, Al Shimam was a good one. Isaac and, and Blitz said, you know what? I'm going to agree with you. I don't agree with you. You know what? I'm going to actually put him below Cherry Evans. Uh, no, he's, Cherry Evans is more... No, you know what? You know what? I'm actually going to put Cherry Evans all the way down the bottom. I'm putting Cherry Evans down the bottom due to the fact that at Factor as a captain, you can't let that second half happen like that. You can't. You can't. So I'm going to put him down the bottom, right down the bottom there. Uh, just like I did with Cleary in game one. Uh, he was meant to be the guy. I put him down the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, Cherry Evans there. And Kirk Catewell will go top of Archie Miller. Yeah, I don't disagree with that one at all. Next up here, Liam Martin. Uh, I'm going to put him down the bottom and did the job area. I, I, I don't think he was anything great. I think that, you know, he did his job. Um, it wasn't anything that I remember. I don't think there was anything that made his game memorable, but you can't put anyone not that great from New South Wales after a 44-12 win. You can't. Especially game, uh, the first half when it was a grind. You know, the forwards would have had to put in an effort there, and Liam Martin probably would have been part of that. Uh, so I'm assuming, I guess. And then the second half... The, the forwards got the job done to allow the backs to have so much space. Uh, they tied him out, so I'm going to have to assume that Liam Martin did his job there. So yeah, I'll, I'll put him into, uh, into did the job, and I'll put him down towards the uh, the, the, the back end there. But no no insult towards him at all. And there's not even an insult towards Appy or Angus Crichton or Cookie there, uh, who are all around that area. Uh, it's just that, you know, I still did the job, still fine. It's just nothing, you know, crazy. Next up here, we go to Lindsay Collins. And unfortunately, guys... I'm going to put him here too. Now, he was an elite for me in game one. He was elite for me in game one, but Lindsay Collins was nowhere to be seen in game two. And I say to you guys quite frequently that I don't believe in him at the Roosters. I don't think Lindsay Collins is that great at the Roosters, but in game one, he was just ridiculous. In game one, I had him in elite. He was unreal in game one, but game two, he fell apart, man. Maybe because he was in Sydney and he's a rooster and he was able to perform in front of his home crowd there, kind of. Uh, but Dark Western Australia is not his place to play. Nothing came from him there. Um, yeah, high end of not that great, I think says. Oh, no, man. I wish she's been smart enough to try. Tries don't mean everything, man. <laughs> Tries actually don't really mean anything. Like, okay, cool, you get a try. It doesn't mean that now you're in quality because you uh, sort of did the job. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've got I've got Lindsay Collins and Ashley Mummer for me. I just didn't see anything. I didn't see anything, uh, to be honest with you guys. But guys, we've got about maybe uh, roughly 10 people to go here, guys. So let's hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe when you're around here. I appreciate you for tuning in. As per usual, obviously, we haven't done one of these live stream uh, reactions to the teams. We've done it as a live stream to the games and whatnot, but we've never done one of these where we sit down and just chat away about uh, the, um, the players. It'd be good, actually, maybe for next time as well, because... 
I probably won't have time if I go to that game three to vlog it. I won't have time to actually sit back and edit it. So uh, we'll utilize this uh, for game three if you guys do enjoy. As long as you get to at least 50 likes, uh, we'll do this for game three as well. Uh, but let's move on to Matty Burton here. And Burton, he has to go. I'm going to put him here. I'm going to put him below Tedesco, um, but I'm going to put him above Paulo. And if you don't think Burton played well last night, you're, you're crazy. Like he was really, really good. He was really good. Now, I kept saying to you guys before the game that I didn't think they were going to utilize him with the kicking game because obviously he's a center. And centers don't usually uh, get used for kicking games. Obviously, they had Nathan Cleary there. They've got Jerome Luai there. Why would you need to utilize the kicking game of Matty Burton? Well, obviously, it worked out, man. They utilized the kicking game of Matty Burton, and uh, he was, yeah, he was really, he was just superb there. It was great to watch. And um, even as a Queenslander, you just got to appreciate a, a debutante coming in like that and, and performing as well as he did. So I'm putting my phone back up there, uh, putting putting him, uh, uh, you know, as a debutante right into the top of the league in that first game. So yeah, fantastic performance by him. His kicking game absolutely shat on Murray Palangi and shat on Selwyn Cobbo. He shat on the wingers of Queensland. He put them in their place. He said, "You want to play for State of Origin? Well, guess what, baby? This is my first game alongside you, Murray." Guess what? I'm going to teach you a lesson. And that's exactly what he did. He taught them a lesson. They dropped the ball a lot. And uh, no, Burton, Berto. He's got a try as well. Uh, ridiculous. That was kind of a lucky try uh, with Nathan Cleary getting the ball to boot. Now, I normally would say Cleary is not lucky, but it was a lucky-ish try there. But Berto in the right place at the right time and, and scored a try basically on the post there. So uh, now well done to the old Berto. And hopefully he can maintain that form for the doggies. But he doesn't play in the centres. At the doggies, does, mate. So you're not winning the comp. Gee whiz, man. I know that's what you're saying in the chat. I know. I'm not even going to look at the chat. I'm not even going to look at the chat when there's a dog coming up here. Next up, you've got Murray Delungy. Yeah? Sorry, boys. Sorry, boys. That's my opinion. That is my opinion. And I, I, I hate to do it. I really hate to do it at the bottom of Ouchie Mama. I hate to. But I just, I've got to do it, man. He was dreadful. He was off his wing all night. You guys know what I was saying last night. I was complaining a lot about both the wingers. We'll get to Selwyn Cabo soon. But I told you that I was going to say how much I disliked our wingers last night. I kept saying before this game that I thought Corey Oates should come in. Corey Oates should be in for the safety netting there. Bit more experience there. You can't have two relatively rookie uh, guys. It will get rookie debutant season in regards to origin um, in... in in a game like that, you just can't do it. Keep yourself a combo, but Murray Tulangi shouldn't have been there for me. So he dropped a lot of ball. He was off his wing all night. He made some meters. He did. He made some meters. Uh, you know what? He made some meters. Uh, I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him there. He made some meters. I'm not going to put him at the bottom there. Uh, it's, a bit, it's, a, it's a bit too far, maybe. Uh, but I definitely have him in Ouchie Mum. There's nothing that uh, will make me um, go away from, uh, from, from putting him down into that section there. But I personally believe we go still with Corey Oates in that game three. Uh, Billy Slater obviously believes in Murray. We all know that Murray Thelungi is a great player for the Cowboys. And I was banging in his drum last year and the beginning of this year. I had to argue him to be in quality as the... When I did my overall tier list players for the uh, wing position, obviously, if you guys are a subscriber to the channel, which you should be, it's free. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your mates, get around it. But at the beginning of the season, we do a tier list for each individual position. And Talangi, I actually would have, was having him at the top end of quality, but I had to bring him down because the person I was doing it with wanted him and did the job. Now, obviously, we can put him to that quality section for next season. However... Uh, this game really disappointed me. Really disappointed me. And as a big fan of Murray Talangi, I really don't think this was his place to. Um, I really don't think this was his place to, to be in at this time. Uh, Scotty Minto, the next Immortals. As I was saying to my friends last night, Burton is going to be in Origin until he's thirty at least. Uh, big body, extra playmaking option, strong runner, strong defense, second row, center, and five eight all in one. I'm not a big fan of putting him as the second row, but I definitely agree with the five eight and the center. You could even argue that you could probably chuck him into that fullback spot as well. Yeah, you could. You could definitely chuck him into the fullback. You wouldn't ideally want to, uh, but he is a guy that could play a relatively similar game to a Latrell in a way. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could see that. Or even a relatively similar way to a, to a James Tedesco. You know, I, I honestly think that obviously Tedesco is way better in regards to his individual position, but I'm saying that you, you, you wouldn't lose an incredible amount, a drastic amount, if you had Birdo playing that fullback. But obviously, you know, Tedesco is the best fullback in the game and there is a, a, a sizable gap, but... I still think Berto would do his job there. Uh, so, yeah, no, I love what Burton has to produce. And obviously for uh, New South Wales, it really helped them get the um, get the dub last night. Uh, Speed says 2023 is our year. Titans, good stuff. Uh, Blitz says Road 20K. Yeah, we are. Only 2,000 away from 20,000 subscribers. We're going now. We're nearly there. We're on our way. You know who's on their way to the top? 
alongside me, <laughs> Nathan Cleary, my boy. Here he is. Here he is. Nathan Cleary goes to the top of elite. He was incredible. Uh, first half, I think he was... I think that a lot of people are overrating his first half. I don't think he did anything except from the first half, but the second half, he was incredible. Second half, he really blew the Queenslanders to pieces. And look, as much as I will somewhat, somewhat agree with Munster that Queensland allowed Cleary to be as good as he was in that second half, I still think that Cleary is Cleary. Uh, I've been saying for... Uh, years now that I believe that Cleary could, on this trajectory, be the best player we've ever played the game. On this trajectory. And he's obviously going to be that halfback over Cherry Evans in the, in the World Cup this year. Uh, he's going to, you know, win multiple uh, origins with New South Wales. He's more than likely going to win multiple premierships with the Panthers. He's more than likely going to win the Rugby League World Cup this year. And I think that, yeah, Cleary is going to be something special for a very long time now. And I've been backing him in for a long time. You guys have been laughing at me, buddy. Well, you're not laughing at me in the sense that I'm wrong, but you're laughing at me how much I wank on about this guy. So, uh, fangirl number one over here. But in the same sense, I put him at the bottom of actually Shimon in that game one because he was dreadful. But this game, he's at the top of the league. So, great to see the turnaround there. Absolutely phenomenal to see the turnaround from Nathan Cleary. And, um, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, do you guys have anything different to say about that one? Ryan Kimmel says, Bro Nathan is on report. Okay, and uh, Johnny Emerson says, Cleary, brilliant game. It was a brilliant game for Cleary, Johnny. It was br brilliant. Uh, do I think Tommy would be better in centre than Burton? Uh, yeah, oh, look, I, I still put Tommy Trebojevic in centre. Look, guys, you've got to remember, Tommy Trebojevic and Latrell Mitchell are the centres for New South Wales. Right, they are. If Tom Trebojevic was fit and Latrell was fit, then we wouldn't even be talking about Burton right now. He wouldn't be even getting the sniff in. He wouldn't get a sniff because they would be thinking about still putting in Katoni Staggs before Burton. Right, and that actually ended up being a really good play. I said Staggs is still one of the best centers in the game, but obviously he got taken out, and that's fine. Uh, he's not a five eight for all you Tongans out there. Put him back in the centers, man. He's not a five eight, right? Uh, we wouldn't even be talking about Burton. So I don't even know. It's like it's in hindsight, Burton would have never got a crack. But now looking at how he played well last night, he's going to put his name up for a spot. He will. He'll put his name up for a spot. But I still think that the name of Tom Trevoy, which is going to be too hard to hold out, you know what I'm saying? He's not getting the fullback spot, Tommy. So he will be pushing to the centres, and I think that it's going to be tough in future years. Yeah, it's going to be that Jake Friend effect. You know, Jake Friend to Cameron Smith. Jake Friend never got a crack because Cameron Smith was always there. What are we going to see here? It's a, it's a tough predicament that uh, New South Wales have, but it's a very good predicament that New South Wales have. Uh, Tika Pong says, Cleary played really well. His kicking game was on point. Uh, yeah, his kicking game, he, he was kicking for a lot of metres. But I think that with Cleary, it's not even really his kicking game that I was looking at there. It was his playmaking skills in regards to putting the ball in the right place at the right time. Yeah, cool. He got a lot of kicking metres, and that's what you want from your halfback. But Cleary uh, had a very good game in regards to his playmaking, uh, his decision-making, uh, and leading the team around, which is what we need to see from Nathan Cleary. Uh, he is the best player in the game alongside Munster. Honestly, guys, these guys are the best. I know people say Cleary, some people say Munster. Uh, I would argue... I'd argue they're literally tied right now, man. I wouldn't have a, a singular one. I'd have Cleary and Munster tied for the best in the game right now. And Munster obviously had a relatively down game in this one. Uh, lost by a lot, still did his job. Uh, Cleary obviously an elite, but the first game, Munster was the top of elite and Cleary was at the bottom of Alchi Mama. So, you know, it, it, it comes back around. Uh, Munster obviously had got a great experience, great uh, amount of premierships. Uh, he's, he's clearly, the, you know, the best player in the game alongside Cleary. So, um I know New South Wales fans are going to say Cleary. I know Queensland fans are going to say Munster, but I think that they're both tied. Next up, guys, we're going to go to Paddy Carrigan. Paddy Carrigan here was elite in game one. I think it was top two or top three. Uh, I think that... I don't think he got that much game time, to be fair. And can you guys tell me how much game time Paddy Carrigan got? If he had enough game time, like over... Th if he had 30 minutes plus, I would put him in not that great. Or maybe... No, I'd put him in not that great. If he had less than 30 minutes, I'd put him in not enough game time. It, it, yeah, I'd, I'd either put him in not that great or not enough game time. It depends on how many minutes this, the, 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 uh, the man played. Isaac says not that great. Uh, Scott Minto says Munster game one was goaded. Cleary, uh, Cleary wasn't too far behind. Uh, not in game two, one. Game one, Cleary was shocking. Game one, Cleary was one of the worst in the field. Game two, Cleary was the best in the field. Uh, Fesh boys, has he played 30 plus? Okay, yeah, okay. Well, he goes in the not that great then, and I'm going to put him above Gagai, below Papali, because I think Papali had less minutes there. Uh, I know he's got the Broncos on there, guys. I forgot to change it after last time. He does have a picture with him in a Queensland jersey now. Uh, but yeah, I didn't see anything at all there. He played 63 minutes. 63 minutes? I didn't see nothing from Paddy Carrigan. 
compared to game one, that's wild. Like, compared to game one, that's wild. So, I'm definitely, oh, no, sorry. Sorry, 63 minutes. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If I've got this reaction to 60, you know, I'll put him above Kate, Kate Well, If I've got that, if, if that, you're telling me 63 minutes for Carrigan, who is their most tackle, that's it. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's interesting, man. That's super interesting. I'm going to put him at the top end of Ouchie Mama. 63 minutes is a lot of time for me not to notice you. For, for someone to not notice you through 63 minutes of an 18-minute game, that's bad. That's, yeah, that's that's bad. And Michael Packer says, because he's still in a Broncos shirt. Well, you know, if we we're going to talk about the Broncos shirt, we'll put him down there. No, I'm joking. We'll put him up here, though. Um, I don't think that maybe on based on, on his individual game, he might have done a couple things here and there, tackles here and there. Cool, but... Oh, dearie, mate. Dearie, mate. Next up here, guys, I'm going to paint Haas. I'm pretty certain he got injured pretty early. Because Payne Haas, if he doesn't have many minutes... Actually, there's another one for you guys in the chat. How much minutes does Payne Haas play? Uh, Johnny Emerson says, Payne Haas can be so good, but Jake's boy is in the front row as well. It's hard to stand out. Uh, yeah, well, Payne Haas is the best front row in the game, though. He is, for the Broncos. At origin level, he hasn't really felt it, though. I would actually possibly say Haas wasn't that great. I really would. I, I, I don't think Haas was anything spectacular. I think that New South Wales had a lot of better plays in the game than him, and I think that if I'm going to put him anywhere, I'd probably put him as not that great. 37 minutes for Haas. I'll put him at the top. As it, it's rough, but in the same sense, like, shit, man, look at all the Queenslanders down there. Uh, last time we had a couple of Queenslanders, they're not that great as well. I think I'll put him at the top and not that great. Uh, yeah, 37 minutes, and I didn't see much of him at all. I think he did come off injured, but in the same sense, wasn't really getting anything crazy uh, done there. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything crazy uh, getting done there at all, yeah. Uh, Haas having bad luck with niggly injuries this season. Yeah, yeah, he has been. Uh, Scotty Mitchell on the next immortal says Carrigan has 43 tackles, Queensland most, and only one missed tackle. Okay, well, we'll, we'll chuck it. We'll chuck him up here. We'll chuck him there. We'll chuck Carrigan into not that great, but uh, I understand that's the most tackles, but uh, I'm just throwing it out there. It still wasn't great. But I think with Payne Haas, I'm pretty happy to put him there. Uh, it's, it's, it's rough considering they're 142 to 12, but uh, 44 to 12, sorry. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be a great deal of disappoint, uh, disagreements in the chat there. So we'll move on. We'll move on. Selwyn Cobo, he's going to have to go alongside his Murray Dalangi partner. Oh, no, he'll go below him, actually. He will go below him. He's actually going to go... I'm going to put Selwyn Cobo there. I'm going to put Selwyn Cobo there. He was uh, a little bit more experienced, I guess. One game more experienced than Murray Dalangi. But Murray Dalangi's had more, I guess, NRL experience. Selwyn Cobo got outmastered by Brian To'o. Uh, Selwyn Cobo knocked the ball on quite uh, a lot. Uh, Selwyn Cobo was not good in this game. Um, he was uh, he was not good in this game. I don't think that they even... Uh, I just read the comment from Element Gaming. Uh, did Cobo get the ball? I don't even think they got the ball out to him much at all. And I think that was, a, a, unfortunately, a another reason why I've got Cherry over the bottom there. And Munster could actually get dropped off a little bit here is because they didn't actually kick the ball to him, really. If you kick the ball to him, he's more than likely going to win that battle with Brian to Oak. You know, put it up in the air and try and force feed him the ball in the air because he's a much taller guy than what Brian To'o has to offer. So get him the ball in a good position for what the usage of what he gets used at the Broncos. His guy up in the air, put it in the air, and he'll put it down. So, uh, but then again, he also knocked the ball on, which should have been an easy try for Queensland. In the first half, he knocked on a ball that was brain-bafflingly left by Brian To'o, and then Selwyn Cobo didn't score it. It's like all he had to do was put the ball down uh, and unfortunately, he knocked it on because he was just too inexperienced for the moment. So, yeah, I've got him in. Uh, I've got him in Ouchie Mama, and a lot to be desired there. But I do think you keep him for Game Three. I do. I think you bring in Corey Oates for Murray Delonghi. I think you put someone come on that wing. You just got to, you know, put up with it. Uh, I think that changing him now would be silly. I think it'd be stupid. I think that Xavier Coates would provide a little bit of extra help there because uh, obviously. New South Wales knew that Talangi wasn't going to have a good game. I will tell you this right now. <clears throat> New South Wales knew that Talangi wasn't going to have a good game because one, he's a debutant. Two, he's a lot more locked downable than a Corey Oates or a Xavier uh, Coates. Uh, specifically Xavier Coates because if you've got Xavier Coates on one side and then you've got someone come on another side, you've got two damaging ball players in the air that you can kick it either side to. So they're always left guessing. But when you've got Murray Talangi on one side who's more of a ball runner... And then you've got uh, Selwyn Cabo, who's a little runner, but he's also really good in the air. It's more obvious kind of which way you're going to go down. Like, you're either going to really show off the kick there, and then as soon as you go off the kick, you're more than likely going to go that way. 
and you're not going to go to lungy side. If you're going to run it, you're more than likely going to go to lungy side. It's pretty one dimensional, you know. It's very easy to kind of read, I would say. So that's why uh, I never agree with that one. Corey Oates is still very good in the air and also a good ball runner, a lot more experience as well. And you got that from Selwyn Cobo. So both sides. Corey Oates is still a step down massively from Xavier Coates, but it's in regards to origin, I think that it's definitely a step up from Murray to lungy from what I saw. Uh, Johnny Emerson said Coates is better than Tulangi. Absolutely. No question about it. By the way, guys, a lot of you a lot of you do put N in front of the G. Talangi's name is no N. So it's Talangi, uh, but it's just how uh, it's pronounced. It's pronounced Talangi, but there's no N there. I've seen a lot of people utilize that. Uh, Richard Braxton said, I thought Munster had an okay game out of him to try. Yeah, well, that's why he's in did the job there. Uh, smack that like button. Yeah, just smack that like button. Just do it, guys. Just do it. But yeah, I'm going to put him into uh, Ouchie Mama. Wasn't the worst in the field, but definitely was really poor in regards to... If it wasn't for the run meters that I saw that uh, Murray Talangi did make, I think he made over 100 meters still, I'd put Murray Talangi below him. But um, yeah, Selwyn Cabo, he goes into Archie Mama. Next up here, Sia Sipitata Kai. Pretty obvious, guy. Still just going to not, not enough game time there. Uh, he didn't really get any uh, moment to shine. Uh, it was an odd selection in the first place, man, to be honest with you. Uh, is he going to let me go? There you go. Uh, it was an odd selection in the per first place. You know, he was... Uh, he's a good... Center can also play back row, but it was never really going to be his game. They were never really going to have need for him, uh, and I never really understood the selection. So yeah, Talakai, we know how damaging of a ball runner he can be. Uh, we know what he can produce. He has been pretty well locked down for most games outside of that Warriors game. The Warriors game, the no, was it the most recent one? It could have been the Warriors game before that. Yeah, the not the most recent Warriors game. The Warriors game before that. Since then, he's been relatively locked down. Twice by the Titans, interestingly enough. And then obviously by the Warriors again. There's a couple of other games in between. He hasn't really kind of got to that level. Um, but obviously, he's a very good player, man. So he could have been a guy that if it was close, could have come on and, and broken some good tackles and made some good meters, but just didn't get enough game time there. Uh, next up is Stephen Crichton. I think he did the job. I think he did the job there. I would be happy to put him probably... Uh, where would you put him? Would you put him below? I'd put him in this area here, Stephen Crichton. I'd put him in this area. I, I would say maybe like there, personally. What do you guys have about Stephen Crichton? I definitely have him into the job. He's not he's not, not that great. Where would you put Stephen Crichton? Uh, can you you guys can can you guys see? Oh, you can't actually see all the players there. You know, well, it is what it is. You know, you guys know how to do it. You know where I put them anyway. And after this, guys, as well, I'm going to, for people who missed out on the live stream, I'm actually going to go through and have, uh, I've got the players' names here, and I'm going to go find uh, the time slots of when I spoke about them so that we can edit it so that you guys can see uh, when we spoke about each individual player. Uh, uh, Johnny Emerson says, Stephen, pretty good. Nothing outstanding, but good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scotty Minter for Next Immortal says, it's scary, perhaps and White and both deserve to be in the squad, and I'm not sure if either of them locked down on the spot anytime soon. Perhaps is a one-dimensional uh, fullback who is an incredible fullback, but he's not going to get the spot. He's not going to get the 14. Until, he is going to be the epitome of the Jake Friend of Cameron Smith. Papa Nelson won't get a spot with Tedesco there. I'm sorry, he won't. And I love Puppy. I love the little puppy man. The little man. The puppy, puppy, little man. man. Ooh, ooh. I like it. Uh, Basil says, behind William Martin, maybe. Oh, Really? Do you really think Stephen Crichton was worse than Liam Martin? Do you? Took it says hard because I thought Happy was quite good. Uh, well, he's in did the job. He's not. It's not that, not that great. It's just that there are better players than him in did the job, but he still did the job. It's nothing. There's no knock on the guys down the bottom end of the uh, areas. It's just that we're ranking the players individually. So Appy Cottesau is in did the job, and you can effectively put him to the top of do the job there. But they're just the players above him are all. Uh, were all better than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, be better individually than him. It's not a knock on any of these guys. Uh, and all comes to two more. Brian gets injured. Who are you on the wing? Uh, well, they're not, so they're, you don't need to think about that. Dan Marshall's Josh had a car easy, but and that's obviously, but like, that you don't need to because they're not injured. Uh, so what was x Factor saying? x Factor said Stephen was not that great in my opinion. Nah, I'm not going to put him in not that great. I think that'd be unfair. I think the only blue I'm going to have there is Payne Haas. I'll put him there. I want Stephen Crichton there. I don't think he did anything spectacular. I think that they may go with Latrell, but I think it's the wrong call. I really do. I think Latrell is the wrong call for game number three. I do. I think that he's coming back from a serious injury, and he'll only have played one NRL game. One, because he won't be able to play next week. He'll play this week, and then he'll have to have an amazing game to be selected for game three, because uh, game you won't be able to play the next week, so he'll only have had one NRL game in between. So I don't think Latrell plays. I really don't. I really don't. Uh, KJ Minutes is Ash Klein Elite. 
<laughs> John Salisbury says, interesting game one when Queensland went one by six, you had five Queensland players in elite. When New South Wales went game two by 32, you had four New South Wales players in elite. Well, the thing is, obviously, I get it. You're a troll, man. But, like, look at the way this is right now. You've got four players in a league compared to five. Like, one player differently. The fact of the matter is, is that it... If you, are you going to disagree with it? Who do you who do you have in elite? You can't put Jack Webb in elite. Brian to O, to Po. Who who are you having in elite here? That's the thing. Like I get you're a troll, but I'm about to make light and a positive out of your stupid comment, right? So tell me who you believe deserves to be an elite over that, because I don't. There's no way you can put Brian to O in elite. You know, there's no way you can put Jack Webb in elite. Like what what do you want here? You you can't just make it up. You, you can't just make it up. Like we are going through the game. And we are noticing kind of how these players play individually. I haven't seen many disagreements from the chat. And there are a lot of New South Wales fans in the chat right now. Anyway, it is. Like, if you don't like my content, that's fine. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know there are six New South Wales players right at the top there. And I don't think that anyone in their right mind could think that Jake Boyevich or Brian To'o deserve to be in that elite factor. And Drew Paulo, a lot of people actually had him in equality. I put him higher than people had him. I put him higher than people had him. I put him higher. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. But in the same sense, I know you're a troll. Thank you for letting me uh, explain why I threw him up. It. Next up, you guys, we're gonna go Tino Fasul Malawi, and I. It's hard because the first half I would have had him there, but then the se- but then the second half I didn't see him at all. I <clears throat> I don't know. I I think that we're probably gonna end up putting him in the top of the not that great, but like. Yeah, it's it's hard, man. It really is. It really is hard here for Tina Fasa Malawi. Like, he was trying hard. The first half, he was... He didn't actually have much game time, he fair first, boys. If it, he didn't actually have a great deal of game time. You might be right there. What do you guys think? Do you think he's not that great top end, or did the job bottom end, or not enough game time? Can someone let me know how many... Ga- how many if he had less than 30 minutes game time, he goes not enough game time. If he had more, then... Yeah, Josh said he didn't have enough game time. How much minutes did he have game time? Yeah, to be fair, you're probably right. And when he was on the field, he was actually doing pretty well. He was actually doing pretty well. I'll wait to see what you guys have to say in regards to how many minutes that he did actually play. I'll wait to see. Uh, don't forget, guys, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new around to you. Bank City at 38. I'm going to put him here, man. I am. I'm, I'm going to put him... <laughs> His hair is slowing him down. <laughs> I'm gonna put him into the job, man. He's below. He's below a big god of sow here. One second, guys. I know you're gonna see the screen here, but I'm actually gonna make myself a little bit smaller. Hello, that's me. I'm gonna make myself smaller so you can see everything. Ah, oh, it's like I'm not at the game anymore. Crazy, I know. Crazy. Uh, we'll put that like. Oh, it's gonna be too small. It's gonna be too small there. Uh. Shit, that's the best you're gonna get, lads. <laughs> that's the best you're gonna get, lads. Let's see everything there. Yeah, geez, you can't see nothing. Don't worry about that. You didn't see anything, guys. You didn't see nothing. Uh, I definitely am at Optus right now. All right, let's go back here. Uh, oh, you can still see a little bit of it. Move it across. Move it across. There we go. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna put Tina Fast Malawi there into the uh, back end and did the job, and I'm happy with that, bro. I'm 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 happy with that one. Uh, okay, last of all here, we got Valentine Holmes. I don't think he really did anything. I didn't really see anything crazy on defense. I didn't see anything crazy in regards to uh, attack. I would personally probably put him in not that great. I'd probably put him about here. I'd probably have him as a better center than Dan Gagai. But yeah, nothing really uh, too impressive there. Yeah, I'd say Valentine goes in the not that great. Michael Packer says, John, I think you're reading too much into the scoreline. Uh, you can still uh, have elite games in a close game like game one. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, um, just because I haven't got five New South Wales players in elite doesn't mean that I don't think New South Wales had an arguably better, absolutely better game in Queensland. This is just how it goes, you know. Um, there is literally three guys here that in JJ Boyevich, um, Daniel Tupo, and uh, Brian O, who I thought had been fantastic, but you're not going to put him in elite. And if anything, you could argue that he goes here. But I just don't. I just don't think that he still did enough to warrant elite. Elite is nearly a perfect game. Like you can't say to me that really Paulo Burton, uh, Tedesco, or Cleary had anything bad about them. But you can say Brian Toho still didn't score a try. Still didn't really get what he needed to do done in regards to the attacking plays. But did lock down someone. Cabo Jake Boyevic was great, but you know what did he do that really made him elite comparatively with Jinder Paulo? Like is everyone talking about Jake Boyevic like they're talking about Paulo? No. Or Birdo, no. Cleary, no. 
Tedesco? No. But is everyone talking about Paulo, like Tedesco? Yes. Is everyone talking about Paul, uh, Berto, like Leary? Yes. So that's the way that you make it out, mate. That's the way that you have to explain it. Just because a team won by 32 points in uh, Game 2 and uh, the other team won by 6 in Game 1 doesn't mean that I'm knocking any New South Wales players here by not having as many in the league. They just didn't, <laughs> they just didn't individually. This is also individual. That's a team result. This is individual here. And I don't think you can argue with the placements that I've got here. But I go Valentine Holmes down there into... Uh, oh, Bissett did score one. Brian Toe did score one. You are right. You are right. But I don't think anyone has an argument here to make him elite. Would you put him in elite? I think everyone had him in quality when I was looking in the chat. Uh, Johnny Emerson says, Valentine is in such good form for the Cowboys, but other than a good kicker for Queensland, nothing much else. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good quick kicker. He was. He was a good quick kicker. x Fighter says, no missed tackles in origin. Just doesn't impress as much as attack, but he was elite in defense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, Val, Val Holmes, yeah, it wasn't his best game. Individually speaking, it wasn't his best game. And unfortunately, uh, he wasn't able to um, to get a good motor going. So, look, I, I would love to see, at the end of game three, a real mix. You know, a real close game where you can say, oh... This guy from Queensland, like two Queenslanders in elite and two New South Wales players in elite. You know what I mean? Like, how good would that be? I think that'd be really good. I think that'd be really good. I, but I just don't know how that works, really. But you'd have to have a real close 16-14 kind of game there. Both teams play phenomenal, and that would obviously mean one of the greatest games of all time. Um, but look, I, I don't think there's much to be argued with here. I think if you're going to argue anything, you'd maybe argue that a lot of people would say would have said Paulo in uh, quality. A lot of people may have thrown Triple Emerson in the lead, but don't, uh, not many people are. Uh, Isaiah Yo, no, I think he's right there. Uh, some people might put Ben Hunt top end to do the job, but I, I liked him. Also, guys, this is a Queensland channel. Oh, you don't like it? That's your problem. You know, not mine. Like, I do my best to be as non-biased as I possibly can, but there's always going to be bias as well. You know, that's why I look at the chat as well to keep me in line, you know? Um, sometimes... Uh, you do need to keep me in line to, to make sure that I don't kind of go out of uh, out of whack. That's what's good with having a chat here that obviously I can speak to that is able to keep me uh, keep me down. But yeah, when you get comments like that, you're just like, come on, man. I ain't being biased here. There's nothing biased about uh, the selections that I've made here. Uh, I'll have a look at a couple of the chat uh, comments here before we do jump off. Uh, Fesh Boy said, and he bumped off Cobo and, uh, and Gago a few times. Yeah, Brighto was incredible. It was great. It was great. It was great. He's not. A, he wasn't a lead, but it was great. He, he was. Mega Perry said, as a neutral, I'm loving the one-one series going into Game Three, mate. As a content creator, I'm loving it being one-one going into Game Three. As a rugby league fan, I'm loving it going into Game Three as a as a tied game. I said, like, I went for a drive last night and uh, uh, had something to eat, and I thought to myself, oh shit, like it would have been good to actually win that. Like it would have been really nice to know that Origins already locked up and we've won it. But you know, and that's the Queenslander coming out of me. But then, as a guy who creates content and I get to you know live my passion by going to the game in Game 3 and vlogging it and I get to enjoy uh, what I do with my content, the content is enhanced massively by uh, the game being a decider rather than being a, a whitewash. So, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's my opinion there. But guys, uh, I'm going to jump off for now. I uh, appreciate you as usual. Obviously, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you very much for getting us to 18,000 yesterday. Um and oh hold on one second, we've got another comment. Mac said, if you did a tier ranking for Kiwis versus Tonga, Joey Mano gets the elite spot. Do you guys want me to do that tomorrow? Or do you want me to do my tips? Get in the comment section right now. We've got 45 people still watching. Let me know in the in the chat right now. Would you rather me do a tier ranking video for the uh each individual game of the Oh, it's hard though. Or maybe I just do a video where I go through the biggest performance and the, the best performance of international round. Would you rather see an international round review kind of deal in a similar fashion to this, or would you rather me do the, my tipping video, my NRL tips for this week? Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, Johnny says, Ben Hunt or DCE? Uh, for what? What's the context? Uh, Blake Riley says, tips. Uh, Richard's reading says, rank. I got my man says, tips. Yeah, I think tips are probably going to be the one that, that everyone would prefer, yeah. Because we obviously do that every week. Uh, we did it last week, and... I did get most of the games right. I got New South Wales correct. Obviously, I tipped New South Wales as a Queenslander. I said New South Wales would win. I did tell you Fiji would win. Obviously, they lost to Papua New Guinea. I said New Zealand would win. They beat Tonga. And I told you that Samoa would win by 13 plus. So, 
Uh, so I told you Lebanon would win as well. And I also told, oh, I did tip the Queensland women though. I did tip the Queensland women, uh, which was very close, very fun game to watch there. But guys, there we go, guys. I'm going to jump off for now. I do a, uh, appreciate you as per usual. And I will see you tomorrow for my NRL tips. So uh, have your notification bell on rock and roll. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Much love as always. I'll see you guys next time. That's later.